Welcome back and very many thanks for choosing to stay with us. And just in case you're joining us, this is Kenya's Gold. Now, right about now, it's time for the gold conversation and we will be doing things absolutely different today. Now, right here in Nakuru County, Naivasha to be precise, we do have a phenomenal guest joining us, Mr. Abraham Barsosio, who is the program manager, county coordination floor a very heavy title that comes with a lot of responsibilities especially in the wake of climate change now we want to get into details just to understand what are they doing to build resilience of course thanks to climate change at a local level thank you so very much for making time to talk to us today thank you tafuta to me kupata we're so honored to have you Asante, Asante. all right now for someone who's hearing about Floka for the very first time. All right, please give us more details of what happens in Floka. Floka is an abbreviation to mean financing locally led climate actions. This is a program that was coined together by a number of partners. We have the government of Kenya, we have World Bank, uh, Netherlands, Sweden, and um, we have uh, German Development Bank everybody bringing in resources. We've been talking climate change at a global arena, but now we want to take the actions to the local people at the villages, where I come from, where you come from, so that they're able to understand when we speak climate change to them, how to they understand what the issues are, or they just see the changes in weather patterns, desertification coming in, so that is all about flock. We want to build resilience. Remember, everybody internationally, in all the arenas, you even had our president when he was in Paris. He has been a champion on issues, climate change. And, and, and whenever he talks to the body on issues, environment, he talks issues, climate change, global warming, the earth is warming up. What are we doing? And remember one thing, you know? The Bible, what does it say? After God created everything, he gave us dominion over the planet. So it is our responsibility to ensure that we do not harm. Rather, we need to use it now and bearing in mind that we have a generation that is coming to come and to be able to use the same resources that our forefathers enjoyed, we are enjoying, and they need to enjoy. And that's where course sustainability comes in now we want to get into finer details just to understand the different adaptations that we are doing to make sure that we are able to cope with the climate change but before we get into the details of that let's just start with recently we did have a national holiday to plant trees and the whole nation was involved in it first of all how many trees did you manage to plant I did 120 no way. trees great yes and are you planning to continue with the culture it is a continuous process okay. I've been doing it quietly I have bamboo, giant bamboos within my farm and other species. So it is an onward and, uh, a process that uh, is ongoing. And, and um, just to be able to ensure that I contribute yes. to the 15 billion yes. trees. From where you sit, what do you think we need to do so that we make sure we are doing more than just planting these trees? We are seeing them to grow. We are running away from planting. We are going to growing. It's not an issue of just planting that tree and then you take off. We need to ensure that the survival rate we attain 100% in terms of ensuring that we plant it, it grows, and that it serves the purpose that is intended to. And you know what the purpose is here? Is that um, it's the issue of carbon. As we emit, are we able to absorb carbon sequestration? Yes. So it is, it is a good move, a wise move, most welcomed. And um, if you look at the main goal of all this is to reduce emissions, greenhouse gases, that is causing the global warming, and then end up being uh, climate, bringing in climate change uh, issues. So that is the, the main goal. And there are others livelihood diversification. Are we able to get economic value from these trees? Yes. I do indigenous trees. There are some indirect economic uh, activities I get from it. I do the um, exotic trees. 
plantations, uh, for example. And after a few days, a few years, I'm able to sell some of these products. And I'm able to sustain myself. Mm -hmm. Now, support is very important to see this mission get accomplished, all right? And you mentioned we are getting um, finances from World Bank. Now, from where you sit as a project manager, please break down for us some of the adaptations that we are implementing. For someone who just thinks when you're talking about, you know, protecting our planet, the much we can do is just plant trees. What more are we doing? Flocka, from where we sit at the National Treasury and at the PIU, the project implementation unit. We give money to counties in terms of grant. So we are using the structures that are already created by the government of Kenya through the constitution, 2010 constitution. And what we are doing here is um, in the way the program is designed and the way we want to tackle the issues of climate change, what we did as Flocka and all the stakeholders therein was that we I did what we call participatory climate risk assessment. In all the 1,450 1, wards in this country. Why the climate risk assessment? So that some of these issues, and why at the world level? So that some of these issues comes directly from the communities themselves, the local people, the mamamboga in the village, that uh, man who tills his farm in the village, the people who are affected most by climate change issues. And out of the PCRA, the Participatory Climate Risk Assessment, they were now able to come up with actions, climate change actions, which is a five-year action plan. But they were now able to break it further into what are they able to do within, within a financial year. And what we did here, we were looking at different sectors. Climate change affects us from all the sectors. And we are looking at major around four sectors. The water sector, environment sector, we are looking at health, we are looking at agriculture and, and, and livestock. What are some of the adaptation issues that we need to have a look at? Remember, one major thing here is the issue of food security, which if we are not very careful, as we tackle the issue of food security, if we do not do it sustainably, then what are some of the effects that comes in? We have livestock, we, have, uh, we are rearing our cattle, our animals. Whenever there are disease outbreaks, it comes with its own impacts to our communities. Go to Kajihado, for example. When a disease comes or drought comes, it wipes all the animals. People start selling their land for them to be able to do restocking. Are we able to ensure that we assist them on issues further? so that when the droughts are there, they are able to feed their animals and they are able to earn a living, a living from it, so that we do not run again to issues, charcoal burning, destroying our environment. Look at the degradation. Again, there are a lot of um, other adaptation issues that we are looking at. Use of renew renewable energy. We've been pumping water using uh, fossil fuel. Can we be able to ensure that we adapt the issues of uh, uh, clean energy, the solar energy, to be able to pump our water. And it is an entire value chain, from production all the way to the outputs, even to the market, and, and, and using some of the uh, products that come in. So from drilling a borehole, it is able to ensure that we have uh, water for domestic use, for irrigation, doing water pans. And, 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 and these interventions don't come from us, the leadership. It comes from them, the local people themselves, because they know where the shoe uh, pinches. As a project manager again, I go back there. How are we making sure that our farmers are sensitized enough? Our farmers, even those in the rural areas, are aware of what we're talking about when it comes to climate action and the need to adapt to these new styles because the lack of information sometimes causes an issue. How are we ensuring that sensitization reaches the farmer, they understand and they're able to adapt to the climate smart agriculture practices? The first thing that we do at Flocka is to ensure that climate issues are mainstream in all the sectors. And agriculture is one of those major sectors 
that climate change issues need to be mainstreamed in. And, and you've seen a lot of uh, climate smart interventions. Organic farming is one of them. Utilization of the av available space is, is one of those integral issues. And, and you can see even from where we are seated, mm -hmm. how this farmer has been able to um, adopt this kind of uh, mechanism. Mm -hmm. If you just go to just any other farm, that sustainability is not taken into consideration, you'll find that this one can cover a huge piece of, of land. These are some of the things that we want to see our local communities come up with, with the assistance of the technical members who are able to understand these issues. Extension services are some of those issues that play very critical roles. If we are able as government to provide extension services to our farmers, build their capacity, make them to understand the changes that are happening now globally, and then they'll be able to adopt some of these, of these, of these mechanisms. People now are moving away from huge stocks, herds of animals, to dairy farming. Look at the quick wins uh, uh, they are in, and, and, and other, so many other interventions within, within agriculture. Soil conservation is, 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 is another issue. Uh, crop rotation, we need to sensitize them. How to, how to, the use of manure in organic farming in, 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 in our farms. So those are some of the things that we want to see and ensure that all of them have uh, sources of water. Food security is very key. How far are we in making sure that the services from field extension officers are actually implemented? Because from our very many trips to farmers in different parts of the country, you realize there is a challenge there. They're not yet accessing the services of field extension officers, yet they play a very critical role in the sensitization. There are so many challenges that counties are facing currently, and one of them is um, to be able to employ a number of those people. And that is why we are coming in as Flocker, so that we are able to take some roles and be able to fund them. And then they have the money that they are able to save. They employ some of these officers so that nearly in every ward they are able to have extension officers and be able to reach to reach our farmers. And, and this is what we've done within Floca is that in every ward we have ward climate change planning committees in all the 1,450 wards in this country. It is, it is a plus for, for, for this country in, on, 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 on ensuring that we build a resilient, climate resilient, especially with our farmers. Mm -hmm. Just on a lighter note before we take a break, <laughs> yourself, are you a farmer? Yes, I am. I am, I am a farm. I do dairy farming in a small way. I do kales, mm -hmm. tomatoes, right. and, and other crops. All right, so I'll invite you to my farm one of these fine days. You know you've promised our viewers. <laughs> I will hold you accountable to that. You will definitely have to go to Mr. Abraham's farm. But for now, we are taking a short commercial break. But when we come back, we'd like to know what Floca is doing when it comes to working with the creative minds of the youth to come up with adaptations to help deal with the climate change. You're taking a 